Most people on both sides had the sense to condemn today's shooting in Virginia for the atrocity that it was, but most people isn't everybody. Earlier we showed you a Huffington Post writer who praised the shooting today in public. There are more people like him out there, and there are far more people who have in recent months been seduced by the lure of political violence because it's just easier and emotionally satisfying. Among them, CNN's Kathy Griffin mock beheading the president two weeks ago. In New York City, New Yorkers are enjoying a take on Julius Caesar, the Shakespeare play, where a Trump lookalike is stabbed to death. Mark Stein is an author and columnist. He's been warning about the growing acceptance of political violence on the left, and he joins us tonight. Mark, is it too simple to connect the dots between this growing rhetoric of violence and what we saw today? I don't think it is, Tucker, because I think what they all have in common, going right back to the uh, dawn of this administration, uh, is that the left wants to denormalize and dehumanize, to use your words, its political opposition. And they do that in a variety of ways. Uh, so, for example, when uh, Charles Murray wants to give a speech at Middlebury College, they have to have a riot. They don't have a debate in which they demolish his argument. They don't want to win the debate. They want to prevent the debate taking place. That's right. Uh, they want to label somebody a hater. If you happen to think that Obamacare is not the best public policy, it's because you want grannies and urchins to die. And once you do that, you're basically saying there's no form of civilized political discourse possible uh, with your opponent. And the logic of that is that instead you riot and you beat them up as they do at Middlebury. Uh, you poison them, as happened to Robert Spencer, who's well known to this network when he gave a speech in Iceland recently. Uh, or you uh, open fire on them. And, and you make politics impossible if you do that. Because it's not, you're not debating someone who disagrees with you. You're debating someone who's immoral. It's the faithful versus the infidels. There's a religious quality right. to the way they approach politics. Do you notice that? Yes, I think so. And I think if you have like people like the Southern Poverty Law Group, for example, which has become fabulously wealthy by labeling everyone they disagree with as a hate group. Well, if you keep calling everybody a hater, and in fact, if the raison d'etre of your organization is to call people haters, you're the hater. Uh, and I, I would actually like to disagree with the tone of what we've heard today, uh, including uh, in the last hour from Martha McCallum and Britt Hume when they're talking about unity and will this unity last and all the rest of it. Obviously, the unity won't last because ultimately Rand Paul has very little that unites him with Bernie Sanders. We don't actually need un unity. We need robust civilized disunity uh, where people honestly recognize that they disagree with each other right. on health care, on immigration, uh, on uh, Islam, on transgendered bathrooms and a bazillion other things, but that that doesn't make the other person a hater. Uh, and you have to, and simply put, the left has to be willing to actually engage in debate with people it disagrees with. I wonder if that reflex, the, de the de reflex to debate, is atrophying on the left. I remember liberals as kind of champion and skilled debaters. There were a lot of them when I was a kid. Now it's very hard to find one who will defend his yeah. positions. Yeah, and I think you actually get out of shape like that. I mean, if you watch these bozo imams on Al Arabia or whatever, who, they talk a good talk, and then the minute they're up against some feminist Muslim from Belgium, uh, the, the, the bozo imam uh, is just reduced to nothing, because he's actually, he, he, he hasn't held an honest debate in his entire life. And I think that's actually, that's actually the problem here. Uh, is that simply by pointing fingers and labeling people, your, your own skills are atrophying. And we see, we see that on the left. But, you know, they've got to own this. Uh, it's not edgy comedy to hold up a severed head of your political opponent. Um, there's a very useful American, and I think it applies more to the left because they're so invested in big government. Politics is everything. So when you're out of power, it's not just the swing of the pendulum and the other guys are in for a couple of years. It's, uh, it's, the, end of, it's the end of everything to you. And there's That's a right. useful American expression which always rings a little odd to my foreign ears, and that's get a life. 
and actually get a life is good advice. If the person you want didn't make it to president, yeah. tough. You can have another go in four years. In the meantime, take up flower arranging, take up tap dancing, take up dog sledding, get a life, and I, it well, won't be that big a deal. That's very deep, and I really want to see the imam versus the Belgian feminist. That's what, next time, that's give me the right. web address. Mark Stein, great to see you, as <laughs> always. Always a pleasure, Tucker. Thank you, Mark.